Capitol Police Chief, somebody who is working close with Nancy Pelosi, may have been busted, caught in some perjury allegations because he was on the stand with the Oath Keepers in their trial, against them in their trial, and he said that he was in certain locations under attack, and it turns out that maybe that's not, in fact, true. Representative Loudermilk released some images of this guy, and his name is David Lazarus, Capitol Police Special Agent, saying that he was working with Pelosi throughout this or deal. And he, during his testimony, said that he was also communicating with this guy who you've seen all over the media, Capitol Police Harry Dunn. And so that's the background. These are the two individuals that we're going to be talking about. But we also have the report about the trial transcripts that was assembled and analyzed by our friends at The Blaze. And here is what they're asking. Very important question. Did the Pelosi security chief, this guy, David Lazarus, did he perjure himself during the Oath Keepers trial? Now he was part of the protective detail covering Pelosi. And they say this guy is Steve Baker, good follow on the X platform, says that this guy appears to have given false testimony about his whereabouts during a key encounter with the Oath Keepers. We know that because the CCTV footage shows he was in a different location. So they're going to go through an analysis on this. And for each of these trials, the Oath Keepers were charged with all sorts of different crimes. They brought out the big guns, right? All of the heavy hitters from the DOJ. A lot of people got some pretty serious penalties. Stuart Rhodes, for example, got 18 years, 12 years for Kelly Meggs. They're going away for quite a long time. But they were very excited about this. And we have very little footage from what happened on that day. But during the trial, this guy testified. His name was David Lazarus, a member of Nancy Pelosi's security detail. He testified that he passed by U.S. Capitol Police Harry Dunn, the other guy we showed you the photo of, engaging with four Oath Keepers, quote, three to four times from the trial transcripts. He was evacuating staffers from Pelosi he says they were all trapped. So he went on during the trial to explain that he observed Dunn arguing with rioters and that during that exchange, he eventually found an opening through the rioters and was able to rescue 11 or 12 of Pelosi staffers. During his sworn testimony, you promise to tell the truth, hold you not to the have a God? Lazarus went into great detail about the problems that he had getting through the crowds of rioters gathered at the top of the stairwell. One, he got asked a question. A rioter so-called said, who are you? Who are you? And according to the transcript, he said, this is David speaking, he said, and you know, one attempted to, I had my lanyard on with my ID on it. And one, you know, they were videotaping and one attempted to pull at my ID. And I kind of like grabbed it back and I looked and made sure it was still there. Wow. Sounds like a brutal attack. And then I saw an opening. And so then I just kind of like walked fast to get into the office and then check on the staff again. Wow. That sounds brutal. He walked fast after his lanyard was tugged. Maybe. Now his detailed description of what took place, what he described as quote, very antagonistic and three or four times that he passed by was a dramatic dramatic moment in the trial. He said, every time I interacted or came by, yes, it was antagonistic. He was even shown a short cell phone video of four Oath Keepers standing in front of Dunn. They said, Lazarus, they said, are these the individuals you observed that antagonistic conversation? He says, yes. You saw that? Yes. Any point in these three or four interactions in this space, did you observe anything, any sort of, you know, anything but an antagonistic conversation? He says, that's correct. Well, the problem about this testimony is there's direct video evidence that the jury never Ever saw, it never happened. Three Blaze Media employees, including this writer and another group, recently examined the CCTV video, and that appears to prove conclusively that this guy, Special Agent Lazarus, was not in that part of the Capitol building at the time he claimed, but was in fact in the lower tunnels that lead to the Senate office buildings, escorting senators away from the Capitol. Uh-oh. Now, by analyzing the footage from multiple CCTV cameras and by comparing the timelines associated with Officer Dunn's actual interaction on camera with the Oath Keepers, it is clear that Lazarus did not arrive at the bottom of the staircase until three and a half minutes after the last of the Oath Keepers had left the area and were exiting the Capitol building. So the guy probably lied. So this is the reason why they don't want the tapes released, by the way, is because everybody can corroborate this. And if you have the entire internet corroborating this, that's going to be a pretty big problem for them. And similarly, another reason why they don't want these things televised. If we could see what they were arguing in the Oath Keepers trial, we would have a whole team of people providing counter evidence to their fake claims. And people would be able to respond to this in real time. That's why they delay the transcripts. They don't publish them automatically on the internets. They make you pay for them or go down to a terminal and they don't want any audio recordings or any video recordings. They don't even want you to compare and contrast the evidence that was recorded on January 6th. They tell us it was this massive insurrection. Publish it, give it to us. But no, people would be able to pinpoint lies like this. Lazarus emerged from the top of the stairwell just after 305 
after tactical units from the ATF and DC had completely cleared the top of the staircase, the speaker's lobby, and the speaker's offices of all the protesters. In the absence of video evidence at trial, Lazarus's testimony served as verification by a trustworthy law enforcement official of Dunn's account to the jury. This guy was brought in as a corroborating witness to support their key witness, Dunn. But even without consulting the new video evidence, both men are on record offering conflicting accounts of circumstances in which they supposedly encountered each other at the top of the rotunda staircase. Lazarus claimed that he saw Dunn involved in a conflict with the Oath Keepers as Lazarus came up the stairs. Dunn claims the opposite. He says that he saw Lazarus involved in a conflict as Dunn came up the stairs. So Blaze Media has got a copy of Dunn's forthcoming book. Oh man. So their books are going to be the things that really get him in trouble. Standing my ground, a Capitol Police officer's fight for accountability. Oh gosh. Scheduled for release on pages 79 and 80, Dunn describes his first encounter on the day with Lazarus. He says, I took off, running up a winding spiral staircase towards the speaker's lobby. Now I was on the same floor as the rotunda. As soon as I made it to the landing, I saw a special agent, David Lazarus. He was being hassled by some rioters. Okay, well, apparently neither Dunn's ghostwriter nor his editor checked the Oath Keeper's trial transcript, hello, where Lazarus claims to recount the same moment in time. Question for Lazarus. How was your evacuation efforts? How did you interact with this space? How are you going in relation to what you're looking at now? That's the transcript, objection, compound question. Lazarus says, okay, so I came up from the first level and I came up to the stairs behind Dunn. And as I'm coming up, I could see Dunn above me as I was coming up the stairs. Huh. And I looked and I see him standing there and this crowd is like right in front of him. Well, that's weird. So I came up to the first level and as I'm coming up, I see Dunn. But he's running up the staircase. Dunn's running up the staircase. And as soon as I made it to the landing, I saw Lazarus. So which guy's running up the stairs, man? This is confusing. I don't know who's lying or not. So apparently nobody figured it out. Dunn claims to have first seen Lazarus already on top of the staircase when he arrived. Lazarus claims that Dunn was, quote, above me already at the top of the staircase when he arrived. <laughs> Because it's all fake. So the man who wasn't there, Capital CCTV reveals that Dunn reached the top of the staircase at exactly the footage. Dunn got up there at 244. So Dunn could not have seen Lazarus there because Lazarus is clearly identifiable on video in the tunnels in the other building at the same time. And Lazarus could not have seen Dunn interacting with the Oath Keepers, quote, three or four times in a very antagonistic encounter because Lazarus did not arrive at the staircase until 256.45. The last Oath Keeper left at 253.30 already gone for three minutes. Again, Lazarus arrives well over three minutes after the Oath Keepers had departed the area. But in Lazarus's own trial testimony, he claimed that he was not present when video footage shows that Dunn was actually at the top of the stairs. This important element of his testimony was missed not only by all eight of the Oath Keepers defense lawyers, but also by the journalists reporting on the trial from the first floor media room in the courthouse. Yes, and it's something like that is very difficult to catch. I mean, my gosh, because he just, everybody missed it. And honestly, it's because because I would imagine it's because they can't watch all of the footage. I mean, I don't know if they should have caught that. They probably should have caught that. But these trials, man, we covered these trials. I really have a lot of empathy for the defense. So in other words, I'm not going to dunk on the defense lawyers on this because they got adverse ruling after adverse ruling after adverse ruling. I'm not saying he's dunking on it, but I think like this is something that the government, in other words, I'm putting this with the government, okay? The government put a liar, in my opinion, on the stand, right? The guy lied. Like the guy, that's their witness. And of course, it is the defense attorney's, you know, job to cross-examine them and to shatter their credibility. But they know, like, they know this. It's their case. And they put him up there. They put a liar on the stand. So Lazarus truthfully testified that he had been escorting U.S. senators through tunnels. So they picked that back up. So as you're going into the tunnels, are you with the United States senators? Yeah. So we evacuate the entire Senate back down into the stairs, and those tunnels go across Constitution Avenue, back up to the Senate buildings, where we had an area that was specifically set up to secure the Senate. Did you remain at this location? No. Once we started moving through the tunnels, I heard shots fired. Probably Ashley Babbitt that they shot and murdered. And so once I heard that shots were fired, I saw the senators were doing okay. We had enough agents with them to get them to safety. So I turned around, started going back towards where I heard the shots being fired. Now, the reports of shots fired was heard at the Capitol Police main ops radio at 244. This was in response to the single shot that Michael Byrd fired. Yeah, that killed Ashley Babbitt. Now, this is what Lazarus heard according to the radio communications. Epoch Times got this. Dispatcher says, there are shots fired at the house floor. I need units to respond. They're taking shots into the house 
house floor. We need units to respond to that location, 1443 hours. So Lazarus testified, verified by CCTV, that he was moving through the tunnels when he heard the shots fired, All right? 1443 would have been 243 p.m. Dunn reached the top of those stairs at exactly 244. They saw it in the footage. Oath Keepers Ken Harrelson entered the same area only 30 seconds later. Those times are verified as well. So Lazarus did not arrive back from the tunnels and reached this spot until 256, five minutes after Dunn had been relieved of his position by the civil disturbance officers and three minutes after the Oath Keepers had already left the area. And so this is such good work by these guys. So shout out to these reporters and we'll shout them out and their names at the beginning. But this is only the beginning of our unraveling. Analysis CCTV footage shows there are much more factual inaccuracies. And this is an example of why we need the 41,000 hours. Blaze Media submitted these requests for these video clips under the new guidelines. We'll see if we get them. Now, the Oath Keepers defense teams missed these key contradictions. They filed motions for continuances. But yeah, given the overwhelming amount of video discovery involved, they, I agree with this. They simply lack the time and resources for a thorough review, which I, you know, I agree. And we were here reading through not the Oath Keepers trial, but the Proud Boys trial, man. And they were under so much. It was really, really shocking and sad thing to watch. It was not justice at all. So he says the Justice Department and the FBI did have access to the time and the resources to review this. Exactly right. But in their pre-trial witness preparations, they crafted a version of the events to present to the jury that does not seem to have taken place. Right. This is my point. This is their witness. This was their case. They brought this guy in to testify and he lied or looks like it, in my opinion. Did the special agent assigned to the protection commit perjury? Did he lie under oath to bolster a narrative against the defendants? If so, why? Who put him up to it? And in what manner of interaction did Harry Dunn really have with the Oath Keepers? They're going to be continuing to investigate this and I'm encouraging you to support them as they do. This guy, Steve Baker, did an awesome job on this and he posted a follow-up thread that we're going to hit. So check them out at The Blaze. He's a contributor. He's talking about David Lazarus and this guy, Harry Dunn, the officers. He posted an updated thread because Loudermilk released some more footage that actually corroborate his claims. So here is the thread. He says, following up on our recent report, the one that we just read, we're pleased to finally be able to release a statement now. This is from Congress along with screenshots. So this is what Loudermilk says. An allegation of a Capitol Police officer lying under oath is a very serious allegation and it must be fully investigated. So for this reason, Loudermilk says, I am releasing these still frames from the U.S. Capitol Police CCTV video footage with timestamps showing the movements of Officer Lazarus through January 6th. Looks like this. He says, we're grateful to the congressman for helping us. He says here on the October 4th story about Lazarus, we were able to show in great detail where he was. Here's one image of just where he was. But because Lazarus was in another Senate office building across the street at the time that the encounter between Dunn and the Oath Keepers began, we were able to track him escorting staff and senators. Okay, here he is walking through. There's his lanyard. Lazarus can be seen moving away from the Capitol building through a lower tunnel at 237, not fighting the Oath Keepers there, and he continues to move towards the Senate office at 241. During his trial testimony, he stated that he began his return to the Capitol after hearing, quote, shots fired over the U.S. Capitol Police radio. That occurred at 243. Here's Lazarus seen moving back towards the Capitol at 245, meaning that does not match his trial testimony. Dunn's encounter with the Oath Keepers began at 244 and lasted about five and six minutes. Now here's Lazarus finally emerging from the tunnel to the Senate side of the Capitol building at 248. So Dunn falsely testified, Dunn did, that Lazarus was already in that location. So we've got two people with fibbed stories, lying, Dunn and Lazarus. No, we were there together. No, you weren't. Where he encountered the Oath Keepers before he arrived is this photo. Now, but Lazarus can be seen at the top of the elevator leading up from the tunnel at 248 and on the Senate side of the Capitol over four minutes after Dunn encountered the Oath Keepers on the opposite side. Lazarus continues to move through the lower level of the Capitol. On the Senate side, 249, Dunn's encounter with the Oath Keepers is almost over, but Lazarus testified that he saw Dunn in, quote, an antagonistic conversation with the Oath Keepers, quote, three or four times. And here he is again. Lazarus can still be seen on the Senate side of the building at 250. At or about this time, Dunn was being relieved at the top by the small rotunda by other officers, and the Oath Keepers began moving back into the rotunda. So he's in a totally different location. Now, at 252, Lazarus can be seen continuing his progression towards the House side of the Capitol. The four Oath Keepers are no longer there. They're no longer standing a line between Dunn and the other protesters. They've already moved. Time stamped at 252. 254, Lazarus continues toward the House side of the Capitol. He's still one level down from where Dunn and the Oath Keepers are, but it's already been over at 254. 256, 
staircase. Lazarus is still one floor below and has still not arrived at the staircase that he claimed to be at when he saw Dunn fighting with the Oath Keepers. By this time, those Oath Keepers have already left the rotunda and they're about to exit the east doors. 256, they're following this guy everywhere. Could you imagine if they released all this footage and we could do this for everyone? We could just go through all the transcripts and see all the Capitol Police officers and say, oh, let's follow you. Let's follow you. Let's follow you and see if your trial transcripts match the truth. So here he said that he saw him three or four times. He was rescuing 11 or 12 of Pelosi's officers and they contradicted each other's statements. Dunn first claimed to have seen Lazarus at the top of the staircase when he arrived at 244. And by contrast, Lazarus testified that Dunn already standing at the top of the staircase when he came up the stairs. Now, both men lied in their conflicting stories because Lazarus was in the Senate at that very moment in time. It is a physical impossibility, says Steve Baker at TPC4 USA, to have seen what they claimed in their testimonies. We want to thank Representative Loudermilk and the House committees for access to these items and permission to release these screenshots. And so, absolutely incredible. So, amazing work by this team. The Steve Baker, Blaze team contributing over there with the rest of the crew. Really, really great stuff. And I think this is what we're looking for, right? More lies, more contradiction. And let's be clear about this. These are not like civilians, okay? These are two police officers. Their job is to be able to observe and report with accuracy. And both of these guys were not able to do that. Why is that? What are they doing here to bolster each other's claims and to fib lie to the rest of us? We need all of the footage released. We need explanations and transcript releases and explanations for the contradictions. And if these people are perjuring themselves, there needs to be new trials or the charges should be dismissed entirely. Great work to the Blaze team and Steve Baker and the crew over there at TPC4 USA. If you want to follow along on that story, I'd encourage you to do that because there will be more to come. January 6th, the entire setup, I'm sure, will be revealed slowly but surely. All these contradictions will continue to bubble up thanks to great work like Steve and others and we'll be here to continue to cover it, my friends. I appreciate you subscribing. Thank you for sharing this video with a friend or family member. Thank you for inviting them to join us on our daily live streams and we'll be looking forward to seeing you on the next one.